continuing coverage of the death of four Americans in Libya. And joining us now, the former State Department official, Christian Whiten. He's also principal to the consulting firm DC International Advisory. Sir, good to see you. Uh, I, I guess an investigation begins now, and you got to tighten security around the world. Yep, it's you know looking very bad. We've had a number of attacks, and this actually isn't a new thing in Libya either. This fits a pattern, which is why, frankly, Secretary Clinton's remark that this is a small, isolated band may not be true. You know, in June, the U.K. ambassador in Libya was attacked. Egyptian diplomats attacked last month. U.S. diplomats attacked last month, and now our ambassador killed. So this fits a pattern of violent jihad uh, around the world, and especially in Libya. Hmm. Well, if, if, if this was an assassination, if, if this was a targeted hit, as it now appears, what, what's your sense of what the next move is? I'd say the next move, or frankly, is uh, you know both parties in Washington need to wake up and smell the global jihad. We've been carrying on as if Al Qaeda is the main enemy. Certainly, they are a big enemy, but uh, the terrorist, uh, the terrorism we see is actually the vanguard. I would argue of a political movement, the Islamist political ideology, and that vanguard has many facets to it, not Does, just Al Qaeda. Doesn't this have a lot to do with Sunni and Shia and their own, their own issues within their own religions? And, and you have our being up in the middle of it all. Well, I don't know necessarily. And also in Libya, Libya is a Sunni country. Al Qaeda is Sunni. Um, and frankly, you know, Islamists and Al Qaeda have been doing pretty well politically. Mm -hmm. So there are certainly factions within Islam and Islamism that need to be regarded. But often, a lot of times, they can all agree the Islamists, not all Muslims certainly, but the Islamists, the political activists, the violent jihadists, mm -hmm. can agree that they want to, uh, you know, wage violent jihad against democracies, against Western allied countries. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it, should there be a time where we reconsider whether countries that are in such turmoil, whether we offer, where we, whether we offer ambassadors under these sorts of circumstances? Yeah, traditionally, uh, you know, as your commentators have said, a lot depends on the local guard force. You know, you have a couple of layers of defense at embassies. You have U.S. Marines, but they're at the bigger embassies and largely there to guard the compound. You have the Diplomatic Security Service, part of the State Department, essentially the State Department's in-house secret service to defend ambassadors, but they can only do so much against armed mobs. So, yes, in places where you have the complete breakdown of security, customarily you close those embassies or cut them back to a very small staff where the ambassador doesn't frankly travel around very much. Christian Whiten, thanks so much. Good of you from Capitol Hill.